Hi, my name is Ben Usage, and today I will be presenting our work on causal analysis for software-defined networking attacks. So before diving in, I want to briefly explain what makes software-defined networking, or SDN, different from traditional networks. So SDN decouples the decision-making of how to forward traffic, in other words, the control plane, from the traffic itself, in other words, the data plane. So that means that the network switches don't need to figure out how to forward traffic, just that they should follow a set of flow rules. And those flow rules are sent through with the Southbound API that links the planes together. The control plane essentially configures the network's flow rules based on network state or policy. And this is realized in an SDN controller, and many SDN controllers essentially act as network operating systems. And developers can write uh, network applications that implement some desired functionality using a standard set of northbound API calls and services. And so these apps set the network's policies. So overall, these layers and abstractions make it easier to program the network. But how do they impact the network's security posture? So let's take a look at some common attack cases and uh, classes for SDN. So we've seen cases where malicious apps can poison the view of other apps so that they can force them to essentially act as confused deputies. And we've also seen cases where malicious host can uh, influence uh, decision making by taking advantage of cross plane information flow. Now, ultimately, from a defender point of view, we want to know if we have enough insight to see these attacks. So let's say that I'm a network administrator, that my SDN network is attacked, and I need to quickly figure out what happened to recover. So I would want to know things like, you know, what were the significant control plane, data plane, and app plane actions that were taken? Uh, can I see this attack end to end? Or are there relevant pieces that are missing from what I can see? Uh, even if I collect everything, it doesn't necessarily mean I can make sense of what happened. So imagine you know, searching through hundreds of thousands of lines in a syslog file. Um, what happened in the past um, that would have been possible causes? You know, what did the network state look like that led to these decisions? And even if I have some evidence of the attack, how do I know that it didn't poison decision making elsewhere? Luckily for us, though, many of these questions can be answered with data provenance. And you can think of data provenance as basically all of the metadata that shows how data we care about were generated and used. In other words, the history of it. And so that includes the system's principles or agents. In other words, who or what was responsible, uh, processes or activities, and the data objects. And we can model the relations among all of these with a directed acyclic graph that shows that history. And the key benefit is that we can search past history quite efficiently. So for instance, you know, maybe we have some piece of evidence of that an attack had occurred. That piece of evidence was generated by a process. And back in its history, there was a root cause of a malicious process. So we follow the edges in the graph uh, to all of the prior ancestors. Uh, but besides the causes, if we, you know, we might also care about the effects too. And we can easily find those by changing the edge directions and tracing forward. So that way we can see what the relevant history is, but we can also ignore irrelevant history as well that doesn't have any dependencies on what we care about, which is shown on the right here. So this sounds useful, but what makes it hard for the SDN context? If we're not careful about how we model these things, then every network activity can look dependent on every other network activity, which leads to a dependency explosion. If we don't capture the causal relations among the different planes, we might actually miss some dependencies that end up being crucial. And networks are notorious for having attribution challenges uh, because hosts can easily spoof information. Uh, so we have to make sure that we aren't falsely attributing responsibility. And finally, making sense of what the provenance we capture uh, you know, is quite critical to answering questions about attacks. So we present a tool for provenance-informed causal observation for software-defined networking, or PICO SDN. So I'll walk through some of those challenges that we discovered, how we solved them, and our systems architecture. So suppose that we model each SDN app as a long running process. So in the example here, we have an app process, which is represented by a rectangle uh, that uses a packet, it's an, it's an object represented by an oval, and generates a flow rule, another oval. Uh, so to interpret this, we start with uh, flow rule one and say that it was generated by the forwarding application, which used packet one. Now, sometime later, this process repeats with a second incoming packet which generates a second flow rule, and so on. And later, an administrator spots a bad flow rule and wants to trace its history. 
well, it's clear that this app was involved, but we now see that every packet, uh, you know, as input is involved as well as a result of this long running process model that we have. So to fix that, uh, what we did was we partitioned objects and processes. And we found that common repetitive patterns in control plane execution, uh, the event listeners in the apps are essentially loops. So they form a nice execution partition. So for example, here, the administrator traces back on flow rule three and sees that packet three and only packet three was used. Thus, they don't need to look through the rest of the history, which saves a lot of time. We also found an indirect causal link through the data plane. So this is an incomplete dependency because without it, our model doesn't capture dependencies that it ought to. Uh, so imagine that you have two apps, X and Y, and app X sends a packet out into the data plane. So that packet is sent with the instruction to flood out to all of the other ports on switch one. And so one of those packets goes out the link towards switch two. Switch two sees that packet as an incoming packet that doesn't match any predefined flow rule that it has. So then it sends that packet up to the controller for processing or app Y sees it. Now it's clear that app X caused something to happen with app Y, but we can't necessarily see that from the control plane alone. So we mitigated this by combining control and data plane information together. So starting from the control plane, we see that the packet goes out from an app at time one, and some short time later after time one, we see an incoming packet being processed by another app or another instance of the same app. And so our data plane model then identifies where these causal links should be added. So that way we can capture indirect uh, control plane causality. Now, when a switch is added into the network, the controller adds a default flow rule that matches packets that haven't uh, otherwise been matched. Essentially, it's the action of last resort so that unmatched packets don't uh, just get dropped to the switch. So in this example, we see that we have an incoming packet that matched that default flow rule and is then sent to the controller. But for learning switches, this becomes hard because now everything looks as though it's depending on this uh, default flow rule, and then it causes a high fan out as a result. So to mitigate that, we assign to agency or responsibility on a per port basis. So this groups dependencies so that each port has the responsibility for the packets that were sent on them. Now, you might wonder why switch ports? Well, some ports, such as the network uh, edges ports, have hosts behind them. So why not assign responsibility to hosts? So that led us to another consideration. So it's not exactly new knowledge here, but uh, host identifiers can be easily spoofed. Um, so ARP spoofing, for example, is well known in traditional networks. So in the SDN case, this is similar, except that SDN maintains objects with that information so that the impact of spoofing attacks is uh, different because of how those objects are used to make control plane decisions. So we solved this by adding extra provenance to quickly identify how host identities change over time. So say that a legitimate host connects to the network by sending a packet into the data plane. That packet's information gets transformed into a host object. And sometime later, a malicious host on a different port tries to spoof that identifier. So we see a similar type of pattern here, but interestingly, none of the major SDN controllers prevent this spoofing from occurring. And so we add a non-causal edge into the graph that links any of those changes, such as moving location. So thus we have the ability to pinpoint exactly when and where uh, these situations occur so that we can see the causal effects quite clearly. And finally, even if we do collect everything that we want, uh, we could still end up with a complicated history. So arguably it's still better than sifting through you know, verbose syslogs, but we still need to interpret what happened. And so our solution here is to provide a set of tools that lets administrators query for what they need to understand attacks. So for time considerations, I'll point you to the paper since it has more details about how these work, but essentially they allow administrators to find common root causes, see effects at each stage in the history, summarize activities, and identify where spoofing occurs. And so given these challenges and solutions, I'll now explain Pico SDN's architecture, which we implemented uh, on the Onos SDN controller. So to start, network apps and the data plane both use APIs and event systems to interact with the uh, controller's control plane. We wrapped events to identify how dispatches are being used by listeners. And we hooked API calls so we could tag objects with the relevant caller metadata. We keep a little bit of internal state as well so that there, there are unique identifiers for each object. And then we serialize that provenance into a concise representation. 
Now, at some point later, offline, uh, we decentralized that pro or deserialized that provenance. So that involves converting the serialized representation into a graph that we can then operate on. We then clean up and augment the graph to account for what we care about in the attack analysis. And once that's done, we can then use our tracing techniques on the graph to analyze what happened. And we evaluate a Pico SDN with several uh, classes of attacks. One example shown here looks at cross-plane vulnerabilities. Uh, so here, the attack bypasses a firewall access control uh, configuration using a few carefully crafted packets. So the malicious host that generates these packets lives on switch one, port one. So we can see that the device behind this port is responsible for several packets, P1 and P2, that end up influencing the access control app, or ACL. We also see a spoofed identifier, which lets us see if either of those host objects are possibly corrupted. And finally, because of that data plane model, we can backtrace the flow on different, on, from a different switch. So if we didn't have this model, we would erroneously assume that switch two was the root cause and end up ignoring the actual malicious root cause in switch one. So to summarize the work, we considered the challenges of performing causal analysis for attacks in SDN networks. We note several design takeaways, particularly that our choice of model mitigates a lot of dependency explosion and incomplete dependencies, since we precisely model objects, events in the data plane. And realizing that the network domain has attribution challenges, we accounted for those as well. And we also designed and implemented Pico SDN for SDN networks, and we're able to show that our design uh, can help capture and interpret various classes of SDN attacks. And with that, uh, feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in discussing more about this or more about the security of future networking architectures. Thanks again for your time.